Hi, I'm Josh, and this is Cars and Joshy. It's been a few days since I worked on the hydraulic brake system, and I'm just under under the El Camino now, just checking out what has slow leaks um, without putting pressure on the system. Looks like the rear calipers and all of the connections here in the rear are good to go. Not seeing any puddles, not seeing any drips, not seeing any wetness on any of these lines here uh, in the back. But if we go up to the front, um, that's where I'm seeing uh, some puddles under here. And it's kind of the same spot that I've been seeing right here on this proportioning valve. I'm seeing it puddles right there on the back line it puddles right up here uh, this line on the on the bottom right here this line is fine i've tightened that up that's good the leak is coming from somewhere up top uh, one of those fittings up there seems to be leaking and then i'm not real sure if this is leaking i'm assuming it's out of this fitting but i tightened that one pretty good too so I don't know if that's dripping from the top or if that's actually dripping from the fitting right here. And then the other one, definitely this line right here. That's a line that I pulled from the F body um, at the junkyard. So I think it's leaking right here at that fitting. And then it's also, I think there's a cut in the line right there somewhere and it's leaking there. So I went ahead and bought new soft lines. Um, I bought the G-Body style. I'm hoping that works with uh, what I got going on on the caliper right there. Uh, so I'm gonna try and use that. I'll reuse that banjo bolt. The line came with new uh, copper crush washers. So I'll reuse those. This one on the passenger side looks pretty good. I'm probably going to replace it anyways, just because I got two new lines. And there is a tiny little drop forming right at the edge of the caliper right there. So I'm guessing it's probably coming from up here. Um, so I'll probably replace that soft line as well. So before I go and start unhooking these lines, I'm going to go up top and uh, suction out the master cylinder up there. Because I need to pull that off anyways. So let me go up there and get that fluid out of there all right let me see if i can try and siphon some of this out of here there it goes all right got her working i don't think so from out of the box the seal was not on here right up under this cap and so that was the problem all right good deal now i can probably bleed, bleed the brakes with them now Wish I would have figured that out the other night. This is what the new line looks like. Comes with two new copper washers. Try to get this in here. There we go, Maybe something like that. So this is a new brake booster in the master cylinder that I got. I ordered these from uh, eBay. I actually like this better than what's in there now because what's in there now is just kind of a raw metal paint color. And this one is black and it comes with new hardware. Um, so that's nice. Uh, for that and then on the master cylinder this is actually more of just like a, a white color reservoir 
rather than like a dingy, you know, almost the color of this board, like yellow color. So I like the looks of this better than what I got from Rock Auto. So I'm already happy that, you know, I got this instead of what's on there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and, uh, you know, disconnect the lines here and go ahead and take the actual brake, uh, brake pedal assembly off from the from the master cylinder on the inside and then I need to go ahead and bench bleed the new master cylinder get the brake booster hooked up so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done went through all the trouble of bolting this up and then found out that this hole is not as big as the hole from the other brake booster so it would not slide over the pin on the brake pedal so now I have to drill it out. So once again, nothing is just straight up or nothing is easy with this build. So I'm gonna try and go ahead and drill this out so that it actually fits on the brake pedal. I got my new master cylinder in, but before I bench bleed it, there's a step I have to do to this one that I didn't have to do to that one. And that step is to make sure I have the right push rod length set to the uh, brake booster on this one I didn't have to do that because it came as a as a unit and as you can see this push rod doesn't have a way to adjust it and so it came preset and it came bolted to the the brake booster so this end actually goes into the brake booster and when you press on the pedal it pushes out pushes into the the plunger here on the master cylinder well, as you can see, this one's not adjustable. So I'll show you what the new one looks like. Okay, so here's the new one. If I pull this out of the brake booster, you can see it's got a jam nut right there and you can screw this out to, or screw it in to either lengthen or shorten the length of this plunger or this piston. And uh, so what you have to do is use a special tool to kind of measure the depth of the master cylinder and then measure the depth of this little push rod. So I'll show you what that tool looks like. This is what it looks like right here. As you can see, it says master with the arrow pointing towards the master. And what you do is you just set this on here. Oh wow. So the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to slide it on your master cylinder uh, housing. This piece of the tool is supposed to butt up against the flange that mounts up against the brake booster. But as you can see, I purchased a cheap Amazon version of the tool and I can't even get it around my master cylinder to do a proper measurement because uh, you get what you pay for, right? So anyways, you're supposed to sit this flush against this mating flange and then you push this little rod in until it hits the plunger and then what you do is you take this and then you kind of do the same thing here where you put it up against the flange and then you take a look at how far this this rod is from your plunger there and uh well, because I don't have the flash on or whatever, you can't really see. But it doesn't matter anyways because this tool is not going to work. Because it does not slide over the master cylinder. So anyways, it's basically supposed to sit like that. Measure against the, the rod. So, I guess I'm going to have to spend the money on one of the expensive tools. And... I don't know what to do with this. Give it to somebody that's got a Honda or something. I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll get back with you guys when I have the right tool. Well, as you can see, even the second tool that I bought was not the right size. And none of these tools have the dimensions on the ads. So I'm just kind of guessing and looking at pictures and hoping that it's going to fit. And it doesn't. Even, even on like Jags and Summit and the higher dollar ones, they still don't have the dimensions on there. So I have no idea which one will be the right one. So I went ahead and approached this a different way. 
what I did was I took a dial caliper and I measured, you know, the distance inside here, put it flush, measured there, and I measured the width of the plunger. And I did that for both the old and the new one. And I took the difference out and I set the new plunger uh, accordingly. And now that's in the booster. I've got it sitting in the brake booster over there. If I have issues, I'll just take that plunger out and, you know, shorten it a little bit or whatever I need to do. So if you if it's too long, you're going to have brake pedal binding, like your brakes will lock up real quick. You're going to have a firmer pedal. But if it's too short, you're going to have some play in the pedal where you have to step on it a little bit before it actually engages. So there's only supposed to be like a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, gap between the plunger and the the piston here so i'll just have to test that out when i get it on the road for now i'm gonna get that master cylinder bled and put it back on the brake booster tie in the brake lines and try to bleed the brake lines again this is going to be a redo of my brake bleeding with the pneumatic brake bleeder kit from harbor freight you can see my proportioning valve up there I've got a little blue uh, plug in it. I took out the sensor for the brake loss or the brake fluid loss. So what happens is there's a, this sits in there like that. And if there's a loss of fluid in one side, it'll move this plunger and to block that. Either if it's a front or a rear brake type deal, it'll move the plunger in that direction to stop the brake fluid loss. So you have at least some brakes. And uh, if you're bleeding the brakes and it senses that loss, it'll push that plunger whichever direction. And then you won't be able to get the brake fluid to come through there. So that's what that little plug is for. You keep the plunger locked in place so that you get fluid to all the four corners. And so I'm going to go start at the passenger rear and try to bleed all the lines up front, I have this reservoir locked onto the back of the master cylinder, and the uh, tip of the reservoir is kind of around here at the fill line so that the fluid can still pass through that little groove and go into the front chamber. And uh, we'll see how well this works as I'm bleeding fluid through here. It's supposed to gravity feed out of this reservoir into the master cylinder and keep it filled up while I'm bleeding all the brake lines. So I'll go to the back back there and see if I can get some, some fluid to start coming through. Here I have the line hooked up to the bleeder screw and a wrench on there to loosen it up. This line just runs to a quick connect on this tank and then the air hose gets hooked up right there and then you just turn this valve and it's supposed to suck the, line, the fluid all the way through the line and once you start getting fluid through here with no bubbles in it go ahead and close up the bleeder screw and take the, the fitting off there so in theory that's how it works let's see how it works in practice So I had everything bled and it seemed like it was going fine. But then all of a sudden I heard brake fluid squirting out of one of my lines and it turned out to be one of the lines that went into the caliper. And so I cranked down and I cranked down and I cranked down on the bolt and it has these copper crush washers on there. And it just never seemed to stop leaking. I got a little bit more and a little bit more, you know, to where eventually it was just kind of a drip every time I stepped on the pedal. But still, you don't want your brake lines leaking. So I went and I picked up some of these uh, from Amazon. And they've got like silicone bonded to the internal diameter of them. They're called status seal washers. And I replaced on the front calipers I replaced all the copper washers with the status seal washers 
and that seemed to seal them right up and still never had an issue on the rear calipers they seem to be just fine but for some reason the front didn't want to work and so replaced them with this and it worked just fine all right i finally got my hydraulic brakes done uh got them all sealed up with those uh status seal washers and uh i got a new pedal pad on my brake pedal a new rubber pad there put on and so it's been sitting out here about two days day and a half i'm gonna go ahead and pump it and hold it and uh, you can see the brake fluid in there displacing as i'm pumping the pedal feels firm you know it doesn't leak down when i hold it i don't hear any leaking from any of the lines so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna walk around and take a look at the calipers take a look at the lines make sure i don't see anything gripping don't see any wetness on there doesn't look like anything's dripping off the caliper looks all sealed up to me no shiny spots on the floor Let me check the back back here kind of hard to see but nothing dripping off the bottom down here no wetness on there Those seem to be holding up just fine. And those ones still have the copper washers on them. So it's just the fronts that I had a problem with. Check this one out. Same there. No drips, no shiny spots on the floor, no puddles. Last one. Looks all right to me. You can see though, from just working on the brakes towards the back, back there, the paint starting to chip off the caliper. It's that brake, brake fluid taking the paint right off. So, but uh, these status seal washers seem seem to have done the trick the status seal washers that i use seem to have done the trick looks like they're all good to go now so i'm happy about that i have hydraulic brakes i have emergency brake and i have throttle cable everything i need to stop and go so the last couple of things that i want to do before i start wiring i want to finish putting down the insulation the matting on this back half right here i want to put some in here with the battery in the ice box and then i want to pull this steering column out back out and i'm going to paint paint this black and so i think that's going to be the last few things i'm going to do before i start running this wiring this hydraulic brake and redoing the brakes has been quite a challenge. I'm glad that everything's working the way it's supposed to. So thanks for sticking with me on that one. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell for new videos. Thanks for watching Cars and Joshy. Josh out.